Hello and welcome, Pastor John here, and I uh, want to welcome you to our Bible study series here, Going Through the Bible. So today we're going to be looking at the book of Ecclesiastes, and so um, please open your Bibles. Uh, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, um, chapter 12, verse 13 to 14. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. 13 to 14. So, here we read Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 to 14. That's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey His commands, for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or or bad. God bless the reading of his word. Fearing and obeying God. So in this book, we're still in wisdom literature. Ecclesiastes is still considered wisdom literature in the Old Testament. It's written by King Solomon. The date is unknown. And the entire book of Ecclesiastes, again, I encourage you um, to read the entire book of Ecclesiastes and um, be, and because it's um, not just because it's God's wisdom expressed here, and it's God's word, the Bible, um, but it, it we learn more about the fleeting moments and pursuits of life, right? There's um, if you look at the chapter breakdown, uh, chapters one to two is basically the theme of futility, right? Uh, things are futile uh, from a from a human perspective without God. Then chapters 5 to 7, contrast folly with wisdom. So what is foolish and what is uh, wise to do. Um, so in this text passage today, we, we, uh, we just read, um, that it's called, it's called the purpose of the preacher. Or in this rendering, the NLT says teacher. And um, one thing you may notice is, as example, chapter 12, verse 8, it says, everything is meaningless. Everything is meaningless, says the teacher, completely meaningless. God bless uh, the reading of this word. So that sounds pretty bleak, doesn't it? Pretty stark and bleak, and it is. But um, this is not some kind of empty philosophy or um, some kind of a man-made uh, you know, idea or um, value system. But this is God's word. Our loving Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, um, who's, who's given us um, the Bible, uh, for encouragement. So even though it says, everything is meaningless, says the teacher, the teacher refers to King Solomon, um, completely meaningless, um, it is far from it. As we uh, we're going to take a little look at the passage we just read. So the topic is, uh, we are to fear and obey God. What does fearing God mean, right? So uh, fearing God um, does not mean to be afraid of him in the sense that um, like we're fearful or, or, or frightened of things or people, but to have reverence primarily. Um, yes, we also uh, understand that God can and do and will um, accomplish his perfect plan, purpose and timing either through our obedience or um, disobedience. Um, uh, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, we understand the holiness of God in the Bible. And so that's what fearing God means, so that we want to have reverence and, and ask Jesus to help us have reverence for him. So in the passage we just read, it's verse 13 is obeying him and his commands. And verse 14 is a big one. God will judge us for everything. God will judge us for everything. Uh, there is no secret thing. I mean, there are uh, really people who believe or uh, behave in the way that they think, oh, God's not going to know this. Or I mean, this is for those who even may consider God. Some people even deny God. And that's the worst thing anybody can do. But God knows everything. There are no secrets with God. So for us as Christians, as believers, um, that's our invitation to come to Christ because he already knows our hearts, our strengths, our weaknesses. 
And um, as we embrace our identity in him uh, as believers, uh, in Jesus as God in the flesh, who atoned uh, for our sins on the cross, we, we want to at the very least have reverence for him and especially for his word, that is the Bible. Um, so really, there are no secrets uh, with God. And that's, so we see that as an opportunity. So not just, oh dear, God is going to know this or so. Once the Holy Spirit convicts you and uh, you enter a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's already initiated by and through Jesus Christ. Um, uh, we understand that he convicts us through the person power of the Holy Spirit and draws us to himself. And uh, he, he, he does so in many different ways. So that's really the encouragement uh, we can get here from this passage in Proverbs. So what does it mean for you to fear God? What does it mean for you to fear God? It means um, fearing God and leaving all the consequences to him. In the first letter of Peter in the New Testament, 1 Peter 5 verse 7, we read, Give all your worries and cares to God. For he cares about you. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Jesus has God in the flesh. He cares for us. Jesus Christ cares about us. So when we feel empty inside or at a loss or being persecuted or uh, temptation is there, uh, sin and the devil is trying to do his tricks on us, we are called, in, especially in those moments, to turn to our Lord Jesus and ask him for help. And he always will help. As I, I read this verse again, 1 Peter 5, 7, for encouragement. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. That's God blessing you as well. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. And why? Because we will be judged by Jesus Christ on Judgment Day. Uh, Jesus is going to be our, um, our lawyer, our advocate, on Judgment Day, but also our judge. So we learn, uh, Paul helps us uh, explain this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5. I'm going to read this slowly. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets, secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one Whatever praise is due, God bless you his word, right? So there's no secrets before God. So we embrace that and, and turn to Jesus. So what are we to do? What are we to do as believers? Um, so we're, we were called to live as children of the light. And here we have two passages from Ephesians. Uh, uh, Paul writes in the in book of Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 6 to 9. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. God bless you in his word. What is this light all about? This is all about the, um, as Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He, he calls us followers. You are the light of the world. So um, we don't have to live in darkness. As believers, he already knows our secrets and our, our deepest thoughts and fears. And um, so we're, we're, turn, we're, we're called to turn to him. So the, uh, it goes on then in Ephesians 5, verses 10 to 14, um, as we consider that there are no secrets before God, and we're called to fear God, right? In uh, this uh, passage, uh, we read, Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful to even talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed 
when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. God bless you with his word. So that's our invitation as believers to, uh, to fear and obey God. And that's one of the um, things we can learn here from the uh, book of Ecclesiastes. Hope this helps and uh, may God bless you and keep you.